Guess what? We only have two more packets left of the blocks. Let's finish them today. Hey everyone, Kristen Som here, and we are gonna finish this pillow top today. So we only have two more packets of the um, pillow top. We still have like the borders and all of that, but, um, but just two more blocks. So let's go ahead and finish these today. Um, did you see the clown in my video yesterday? That was a mistake. <laughs> I got a message from Miguel saying that there was a clown popping up on her computer and did I do that or is her computer possessed? It was a mistake. <laughs> so that's in the, uh, actually it's not yesterday's block, the one before that. So the melted block at 1735, there is a, um, a clown that pops up and it was a mistake i'm sorry um instead of hitting the favorites button for the transitions i hit the random button and so it, it put up a whole bunch of really interesting um transitions but then there was a clown at 1735 so just know it was a mistake all right so let's finish up these two blocks so one thing that you will need after we finish these last two is you'll need that flying geese that we did the last flying geese piece so we used the other ones in our sections um you can see them here i think they're oh yeah and there's one here so we we already used the other ones and we're going to use the last one after we finish these last two blocks when we put uh section 3l together so these are very easy blocks. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So for number 19, it is the we all scream block. You know, the ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. So we are gonna do the we all scream block and it's super easy, uh, one applique piece. So we're gonna start with our main fabric. This is the gray striped fabric. It's very light gray and it is directional. So depending on what direction you want your fabric, you can see that mine is um, vertical. Yes, vertical. Sorry, I had to think about that for a second. So this would be horizontal when the stripes are going this way, but you can see that the block, it, the cut size is larger um, horizontally and so the stripes are going vertically. That's how I have mine. You can do yours however you want. Um, this is how it is shown in the Kimberbell guide as well. So on this main fabric, um, you wanna make sure to stabilize this. I'm using the Kimberbell fusible backing and we're gonna start with this at eight and a half by six and a half. Eight and a half by six and a half for the uh, main fabric and make sure it is fused on the back with some sort of stabilizer. I'm really enjoying the Kimberbell fusible backing. It's working well. All right, so then for our banner, we have this really pretty pink felt. Isn't that so pretty? I love this. Um, so it's just called pink embroidery felt and you don't back it with anything. Leave it, leave it as it is. And we're going to start with this at four and a half by five and a half. Four. So actually this way, that doesn't make sense. It should be this way. I would think this is called five and a half by four and a half, but it says in the directions four and a half by five and a half. Anyway, your felt. So four and a half by five and a half for your felt. And then we are going to quilt this. So whenever we quilt, we use our batting. I'm using the Kimberbell Project Batting and it's great, I love it. Um, we are gonna start with this at seven by five because our final cut size is six and a half by four and a half. So we, we always do it at least a half inch larger, just large enough that it'll tack it down. So our batting seven by five. And then for our quilting today, it looks like the one with the ice cream cones on it and it's got the milkshake too. So that's food five. We're gonna use food five for our quilting and we're gonna use the four by six. So even if you're using a five by seven hoop, you'll be all fine with this one. I know that there were two blocks that um, were larger. So this is not one of them. So four by six on your quilting and it is food five. And that's all we need for this very, very simple block. So let's go ahead and jump into the next one. Actually, I'm gonna stop it so that um, we can do all of that block and then we'll come to the next one. <laughs> all right, so once you have your um, We All Scream block done, then it's time to do the last block for our uh, Two Scoops Bench Pillow. So I wanna tell you one thing. I'm trying to keep mine really official since I'm doing the tutorial for this, but 
I want to point out that Kimberbell has, or had, I should say had, this is old, um, but they have this like ice cream fabric with all the um, sprinkles on it. How fun is that? This was from Hello Sunshine, which was my very first quilt. I love my Hello Sunshine quilt and I still have some extra fabric. So if you have some of that, you could do that. That would be pretty fun. There's also others from other brands that um, would be fun. So just something to consider if you want to do something a little different, think outside of the box. I think I'm going to probably keep mine official, but we never know. <laughs> right? All right, so let's go ahead and get started on um, our soft serve block. So soft serve block is number 20. It is on page 38 of the PDF, and we're going to start with this um, aqua teal color doodles fabric. I love this one. It's more like minty. It's minty. Yeah, I'd say mint colored doodles. So this one, we're going to start with this at six and a half by eight and a half. Make sure to back it with fusible stabilizer as always. I always recommend that six and a half by eight and a half for our main fabric. And then and that will be really cute with the ice cream on it. So um, then we are going to have our flexifoam. So flexifoam on this one is going to be three and a half by four, three and a half by four for the flexifoam. And then for the ice cream part, it is just a cream, cream colored um, silky solid. And it is going to be three and a half by four, just like that flexifoam. Three and a half by four. I did back mine with fusible stabilizer. You can see that these are the same size. I'm holding it funny, but it really is. <laughs> All right, and then that's for your ice cream piece. And then for the cone, it's that lattice um, tan colored fabric. I did back it with fusible stabilizer, and this is going to be three by four for the cone, three by four. And then as always, we are going to quilt this in the hoop. So our final cut size on this is four and a half by six and a half. So that means that we want a piece of batting that is five by seven, five by seven for our batting. And then for our quilting, oh, it's the uh, waffle cone looking one. That's what I call it. Um, it is lines five, and we're going to use that lines five in four by six. So it's small enough that it doesn't matter. It, this is the one that is an orange design, but we don't. Nobody will need to double hoop it, so we're all good. So that's it for these um, soft serve block, and then we are going to put it all together, and that's when you will need your um, your last flying geese block and we're all set oh my gosh this is it's it's pretty exciting right because I know a lot of people are already getting their cup of cheer supplies um, I received some but I'm not going to do an unboxing yet because a couple things I haven't received yet so um, we we're going to jump into that very soon I think that we're going to fit one thing in between first but it'll be a quick one um, but anyway more information soon for now we're just focusing on our two scoops bench pillow Hey everyone, so I've decided I'm going to merge these last two blocks together. It's completely optional. You absolutely do not have to, but I want to walk you through the steps in case you do decide you want to do that. So both of the blocks are four and a half by six and a half as the final cut size. So they will fit into several different size hoops. So whichever you decide to do, just make sure you'll have enough room for your fabrics to not overlap. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by opening up Embrilliance Essentials. Um, as I've mentioned before, I am an affiliate with Embrilliance Essentials now, so if you decide to um, purchase embroidery software, please use my link. I will add it um, up above in the video. I don't remember which side it'll go on. Anyway, um, so I am going to start with the quilting design. So the first thing I'm going to do is, well, actually, first I'm going to choose my hoop size. So you can see down here at the bottom, I'm on my 10 by 10 hoop, and that will work really well. If you don't have it currently open to the hoop that you want to use, you can click on this preferences folder here and choose whatever hoop that you would like to use. So I'm going to go ahead and stay with the 10 by 10. And I'm going to start by bringing in a quilting design. So if I go here uh, to this merge stitch file button, I can choose my quilting design. So what it does is it opens up and says, hey, where is this design that you want me to find? Um, so I'm just going to tell it. So I just closed a couple of folders so that it's easiest. I am on my desktop and I have my two scoops quilting bundle right here. And we are looking for food five. So food five 
and then embroidery files block by block is the technique we are using for this bench pillow and then I use Pez for my machine and then all of the different um, designs will come up so or actually all the different sizes so I'm looking for the four by six looks like it's going to be right here so I'm going to double click on that all right now you could I didn't even think about this but I could leave it this way so one of them is horizontal and one of them is vertical I think I'm just going to turn both of them all right, so maybe I'll keep the main one up. So I'm going to try this. Let's do this. So I'm going to click on this, and then I'm just going to move it all the way over to, my, to the side here, as far over as I can get it. And then when I click again, I have to click on the stitching, but see these little black squares? That tells me where I am on the hoop, and I want it to be in the center. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this down just a bit more and you have to make sure and click on the stitching and to move the design so that works really well I'm going to leave that here for now and then I'm going to go to merge stitch file again and I'm going to bring the other quilting design in and the reason I'm doing this is um, rather than reordering them and all that it, it'll be easier because I want to join our my quilting so that I can just do the the trimming and the batting and all of that on the very first um, steps so I'm going to look for uh, lines five now. So I'm going to close out this food five. And then there's the lines five right there and embroidery files and Pez. So since this one is an orange design, it doesn't have the block by block or CBT version. It's just one version. And again, I'm looking for the four by six. It's right there. I double click on that and it brings it to the center of my hoop. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to just bring it all the way over here and I'm going to use those black squares to make sure that I am in the center so you can see that here. All right. Excuse my dog behind me. Nope, this way. See Archie. <laughs> all right. Um, so then I have both of those and I could go ahead and merge these now. You know what that would be the easiest I'm gonna do that I'm gonna join um, these now and the reason is because I don't want to join um, the designs I just want to join the quilting and I don't want to join all of the quilting so I'll go through this so um, you can see the two different steps here step one if I click on this it shows all of the quilting for the first one and if I click on step two here then it shows all of the quilting for the second one. And all I want to do is the um, the first four steps, the placement and tack down of the batting and the main fabric. I want those to be joined, but I don't want the quilting design to be joined. So I'll talk about that in a second, but I'm going to go ahead and change the color on this. And the reason is because there's a default one blue here and a default one blue here. Those will join together and yet we want them separate steps. So we, if I change the color, then it won't join them. So I'm going to do that for both of these. So for this first one and for this second one. And the reason is because then it will do both of those together. So I'll show you here. So if I click on the color and then click on the thread down here, now make sure that you're not on palettes. If you're on palettes, then it is using a thread color that is already in your design and the purpose is to make it a different color so that it doesn't join. So make sure that you're not in palettes and click on threads and then it'll show you all your different color options. So I'm just going to easily click the first one, which is dark aqua. So I click that and I say OK and you can see that the the color changed here. So that's the first step, which is the placement of the batting. I'm going to do that on this second design as well. I click on that and you can see it jumped to this other um, block. So on this one, I'm going to do the same thing. I want it the same color so I can do it two ways. I can click on that and I can either just click on that first one here or I can use palettes if I've forgotten what color it was, although I can see it right here. So whatever works for you, but you want it to be the same color so that they will join. So you can see the one one and two one. They are both dark aqua. So I'm going to do that same thing for the tack down of the batting. 
which is the second step on both of these blocks. So I'm going to click on the color and then I'm just going to click the first orange that comes up. It's blaze. And I'm going to do it on number two here on this, um, the second block. I'm going to click on that and click on blaze and say, okay. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and do it on the next two as well. So this is the placement of the um, main fabric. So I'm going to click on that and same thing, just click a color. Now I know I already used dark aqua, so I'm going to use the second one, which is marine and say, okay. All right. And then down here, so that was one, three. So we're going to do two, three right here, click on that. And then we want it the same color, which we used marine. So I'm going to click on marine and say, okay. All right, and then back up to this first block, if we do the orange, and you don't have to do these together at the same time, you can do them, um, do all of the first block and then all of the second block, whatever's easier. So anyway, we've got the marine, so this is the orange. I'm gonna go ahead and click on Oriole. Doesn't matter what color, as long as it's a color you haven't used yet. So Oriole, and then same thing on this two, four, I'm gonna click on the color and change it to Oriole. All right, now notice that these are both turquoise, so they will merge together, but they are we have um, different fabrics. So one of them is the light gray stripes and the other is the mint doodle. And so we're gonna want different colors on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just change the color so that it is a color stop. So right here on the turquoise, I'm going to click on that and I'm gonna change it to sprout, the first one here. And then on the second one, I could leave it default turquoise, but I'm gonna go ahead and change it just cause I'm on a roll here. So I'm gonna click on this and I don't wanna change it to sprout because then it will join. I'm going to instead click the next color, which is sea green and say, okay. All right, now I can go ahead and join these. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and join them and it should take away I think like four color stops, I'm not sure. So down here at the bottom, let me move this over. Down here at the bottom, it says that we have 10 color stops. So let's go ahead and go to utility color sort. And it thinks about it and it took away four color changes. That's exactly what we wanted to do, but we're still gonna check it to be sure. So we click on new view. Now notice this is our original one with the two different steps, the two different sets of quilting. And then the second one is together now. So we were gonna just go through and just check it. So there's the placement of the batting, the tack down of the batting, the placement of the main fabric, the tack down of the main fabric. And then we have the first quilting design and the second quilting design. So that all worked out exactly how we wanted it to, so that's perfect. All right, and then the next thing is that we wanna bring in the embroidery design. So if we go to this merge stitch file, the first one we're looking for, I'm going to go ahead and close this, the quilting design just so that it's out of my way. And I'm going to look for two scoops bench pillow and the embroidery files and I use Pez. All right, and then all the designs start to pop up and I am looking for We All Scream. It's a five by seven. They're in alphabetical order after the size. So it should be right down here. Um, here, it's up here. Oh, because these are the six by 10. All right, so we all scream, double click on that and it will go to the center. Now I wanna click on it anywhere as long as they're stitching, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to visually center this. So I'm gonna use those black um, squares on the edges here to center it in the um, center horizontally. And then vertically, I'm also going to use this line. So I wasn't sure that it would, but you can see from visually looking at it right here and here, we have about the same amount of room. So that actually works out just perfect. So I'm gonna leave that there and that one's perfect. All right, then I'm going to click elsewhere and I'm going to go to merge stitch file and I'm gonna bring in the soft serve design. So same thing, two scoops, bench pillow, embroidery files, I use Pez and um, I am going to look for soft serve and it's going to be five by seven. There it was right there. And then double click on that and it goes to the center. Click anywhere on the stitching to move it over and then use those black dots to um, center it correctly. 
Yep. So um, horizontally, we have it centered here, and then vertically, we have it centered here. I can see that there's about the same amount of room on each side, so that is perfect. All right. So I don't want to um, join any other colors because I want these to be separated. It's going to do the quilting design first on both blocks, and then it will do um, the the embroidery design, which also has the applique on each of them. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this just like this. This is great. I have enough room between them. The two, um, if you have a, I'm using a 10 by 10, you could do um, an 8 by 12. That would work really well. You would just before you have to make sure and do this before you join anything, because once you join, you can't, it, they'll be together. You can see, whoops, I'm up here. All right, so I wouldn't be able to move these now, but um, in the beginning, when you're choosing your hoop size, you could easily move these. Um, if I did like an eight by 12, I would just um, or move it, um, what's the word, rotate it, I would rotate it. So these buttons right here are the rotate buttons so that you can move it if you're gonna use like a longer hoop, like an eight by 12 hoop, or um, even a six by 10 hoop would work because you have the longer, although your quilting design would be um, six and a half. So you wouldn't actually, six by 10 wouldn't really work. An eight by 12 would work great, um, would work perfectly really. So anyway, whatever hoop size that you have, you would just do what I did here Although if you're using a longer hoop, you would probably want to rotate your design. And like I said, these buttons up here will do that for you very easily. All right, so after you've got it how you want it, make sure to do a file save as. It's very, very important, file save as. And I'm just gonna do a working file, a stitch file. I'm gonna do a stitch file. If you use a working file, that's if you add wording and you wanna go back and change it later. If I do a stitch file, then it's just gonna save it as my PES or whatever format that you use, and that makes it easy. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go back to where I had my original design. You could just send it to your desktop, whatever works for you. But I'm going to go to my original folder. I have to think about where that is. All right, so it's in two scoops, bench pillow right here, and embroidery files, Pez. All right, and then I'm just going to name it. So I'm going to name it as, you could say, last two blocks, or we all scream with soft serve, whatever you want. I'm just going to say last two blocks. That's easy. All right, that will remind me what I'm looking for. All right, so that is all saved and ready to go. Um, keep in mind that you have an extra um, two inches of fabric, one inch on each side. Um, so you just don't want, you want to make sure that these are not going to overlap at all. And, and, and they're not because the design isn't, but the fabric could a little bit and that'll be okay. Um, but you could use a bigger hoop, like I said, an eight by 12 would work really well. So I'm all good to go here and I've already saved it. I can actually send it to my machine. My machine's in the middle of something else. I'm not sure if it'll do it. Let's try it. So I go to utility, send to Solaris or XP1 minus the XP1, and I'm just going to say okay, and let's see if it'll do it. File sent to machine, how cool is that? So I'm not sure what all machines it does that for. I, I tend to think it's only the Brother and Baby Lock high-end machines, um, like the Solaris or Luminaire, um, but it could also do it for the new... I don't remember what the names of the newer ones that are the replacement for the um, Dream Machine. But anyway, um, give it a try. You saw how easy that was, utility and send to machine. So we're all good to go.
So I have to tell you something. My shirt today has nothing on it. Isn't that weird? I like never wear any wear something that hasn't been embroidered on. And I have a cute little skirt. Isn't that so cute? I love it. Um, so what should I put on this shirt? What do you think? I'm thinking maybe my sorry, low there. Um, I'm thinking like a flower or something. I don't know to go with the, the little skirt. Um, but anyway, plain shirt from Macy's, nothing on it yet. Give me an idea of what I should put on it.